Mandela in the South African court on HIV AIDS. If you win, you lose. If you lose, you lose. <laughs> so gentlemen, my advice to you is try and have it resolved outside court, but let's discuss how we can help. In the end, they did. I mean, they, the case was resolved outside the courts, but medication like neveripine, which prevented mother-to-child transmission, the cruelest of all transmission, they ended up giving that medication away in some of the countries in Southern Africa, which was a very uh, noble uh, uh, cause. And quite a lot of them have been very active uh, since then. You have uh, uh, Gates Foundation working with one of the pharmaceutical companies to come up with a vaccine for malaria. And if they do come up with that, I think it's going to help a lot of people uh, uh, save their lives. It kills about a million people a year, most of them African. The other examples I can give you is, for example, a TNT, a Dutch company, logistical company that has helped World Food Program, has worked with World Food Program about food distribution. It, it moves more food around the world than any other group. When crisis hit, whether it's Haiti, whether it's Indonesia, whether it's the tsunami, World Food Program, the UN agency is one of the first there. And to move these quantities around the world is a major logistical problem. But the company gives them free advice worth millions of dollars to be able to help uh, the poor. We have other situations where companies have uh, uh, teamed up with other organizations like Rotary, Rotary International and others to eliminate polio. We are now very close to elimination of polio. We have it in only about five, six countries. And with a bit of effort, within a year or two, we would, but Rotary Club and other business will have put in billions over the years to fight the campaign. We are also seeing situations where to help poor farmers, scientists and corporations are coming up with better seeds for farmers. And as we move forward with the climate change, if we are going to be able to look after ourselves and feed each other, we are going to, be, we're going to require quite a bit of ingenuity. We need uh, drought-resistant seeds. We need better management of water to be able to get more crop per drop. We need to be able to help the farmers handle their surplus goods uh, better. And even things like um, ordinary, for what we take for granted here, like cell phones, it's making an incredible difference in many parts of the world. I was in Kenya on a farm, and then we went to a market. Next to the market is, was a very small room. On one of the walls was a, a board, which on the horizontal level had names of the city. Nairobi, Mombasa, uh, Kisumu, and then on the vertical lines had produce corn, uh, uh, whatever. Anyway, corn, onions, tomatoes. And these farmers used to go through middlemen to sell their produce. There they were selling their produce on the phone, looking at the prices in the cities and cutting out the middlemen. And it was, and apparently there was somebody who had worked, a Kenyan who had worked in Chicago, went and helped them set it up. And I said, this is their own Chicago Board of Trade. <laughs> and to see these farmers being that practical. And so there are many ways companies can help with sustainable development. In fact, they can even help grow small and medium-sized companies by giving them subcontracts by helping them uh, improve their produce and be able to create jobs for their uh, people. And so, again, you refer to partnership, and partnership is the name of the game. You have to work in partnership, private-public partnerships, 
civil society and uh, businesses, foundations and businesses, and sometimes all three coming together. I referred to the Global Fund earlier. The Global Fund has an, a unique management situation. We have a board that comes from government ministers, private sector, civil society, and the presidency has rotated. We've had a minister as a chair, we've had a former chairman of McKinsey and Co as a chair, Rajal Gupta, a friend of mine, and we've had a civil society, and it works. And also on the board is some of the recipient countries so that you can hear their voice. And, and, and it is a partnership that is uh, uh, very, very important, and I will tell you, I came to this idea of partnership by posing the question to myself when I took over as Secretary General of the UN. I had to ask myself the question, given all the challenges we had and the limited resources we have, how do we go about it? And so I had to ask the question, what should the UN be doing? What can the UN do? What should the UN do alone? What should the UN do with others? And what should the UN leave others uh, to do? Because you couldn't do everything. And, and when, once you start going through that, you come to the conclusion that by forming effective partnerships, you can expand your capacity and you can pool your efforts to have greater impact on what is required. And, and in today's world, I think the challenges and the issues we are dealing with is such that um, if we do not reach out and work in partnership and pool efforts, some of the major challenges will live with us for a long time. Thank you very much. I think I'll... You want me back?